Welcome to another edition of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Schein. This is Mark Miller. And last week was Rivalry Week. We should yeah. start this way. Congratulations to your Elida Bulldogs. They put on the Bath Wildcats. Yeah, they finished up strong. Six and four is a good year for all they went through. All the Wildcat fans say Isaac McAdams, real deal. Well, I, you know, first year as a full-time starter, and they said towards the end of the season, he really started to click and uh, maybe setting himself up for a great senior year. Might be one of those people we focus on next August. Go. We talk yeah. about upcoming players. Right. Well, what we'd like to do this evening is kind of start uh, off with is a wrap-up of how the league races went. We want to review each of the league champions in the six conferences that we deal with on a weekly basis. So let's put those up on the screen and go through those. I think, Mark, you've got the first one. Well, let's look at the WBL, if that is. I think BBC's first. Okay, BBC's first. Let's go. That yep. was mine, isn't it? Yep. Well, Macomb is going to win the BBC, and the reason, of course, is Macomb is very, very good. Yeah, they really were the good. best team offensively, the best team defensively. If you look at just how the conferences went out, there were three teams that were 6-2. and two, Lipsick, Arlington, and Van Buren. They beat Lipsick 38-8, Arlington 44-14, and Van Buren 34 to nothing. They dominated teams that were closest to them in the conference. Really good year for Chris Algie's team. WBL, we had a three-way tie, and they all played in the last two weeks. What a great way to finish it up. Ottawa, Gwendorf, St. Mary's, and Wapak all finished 9-1, and 8-1 and one in the conference. OG beat St. Mary's, St. Mary's beat Wapak, Wapak beat OG. These were the best three defenses in the league, and three of the best four offenses in the league. Clearly, the best three teams in the WBL. All right, let's move on to the NWCC, and that looked like Sydney Layman's league, and certainly it was at the beginning. Dick Roll and his team, obviously very, very good. They were 7-3, and 6-1. and one. Let's talk about the surprise team in the conference, and that would be Josh Spencer's USV Rams. How about them? They had never won a conference championship before. They are 1-3 and three to start the season, including a loss to Layman. They get healthy. They get six wins in a row. They averaged. 51.2 points per game, tops in the conference offensively. Congratulations to USV and, of course, to Sidney Lehman. Let's go to the Midwest Athletic Conference. And, of course, those the guys that make those state runs, it seems like every year, Marion Local and Coldwater tied for it this year. But how do you get a one-loss tie? Coldwater beat Marion Local head-to-head, -head, but then Versailles upset Coldwater later in the year, and that's how they both ended up with eight and one league records. The top two defenses, the top two offenses in the league, Five teams out of the MAC in the playoffs this year. That is not unique at all, but these are the two best teams from start to finish in the MAC. And let's move on to the track, the Three Rivers Athletic Conference. Again, it's Toledo Central Catholic, and they once again win this conference. They, were, they have been 39 and 3 in the six years that this conference has been in existence. They've won the league once again this year. There's three losses in the conference history. Uh, Whitmer taught them twice, Finley once. In six years, they have three losses. Lima Senior gave them a great run, so did Whitmer. Uh, close. Finley uh, was back in there at 7-3 and three as well, and they made the playoffs. But again, it's Toledo Central Catholic, the number one rated team in Division Three. And the last conference we look at is the Northwest Conference, and it's Jefferson. For the fourth year in a row, Delphus Jefferson wins it. For the third year in a row, they beat Spencerville at the end of the year for the championship. They finish undefeated at 7-0, and 9-1, and one, their only loss coming to Coldwater. So Delphus Jefferson entering playoffs on a roll as they have been the last several years. Chris Summers has made them the class of the NWC. And, and once again, Mark, just to kind of wrap up with something that we discussed earlier, we mentioned how strong teams defensively win conferences. We, we cover six conferences. In five of the six, the team that had the best defensive mark won the conference. The only one that didn't happen was Riverside had the best defense record-wise in the NWCC. In the other five conferences, the best defensive team won the conference. Well, there you go. Defenses win championships. There we go. Our play of the week came from OG and St. Mary's last week, and it's offensive lineman time. That's right. We're going to give a little credit to the guys up front. Here is uh, St. Mary's. Eric Spicer, number seven, is going to carry. But, oh, did you see the block by 56? That's Joey Morlino. We're going to replay it. You're going to see it again because I also want you to watch the tight end and wing back. Number five, Bo Keening, and number 15, Seth Voorhees. That double team just blows that guy away. And then Morlino had a knockdown, Spicers into the secondary, and then it's just speed on speed. That's how running backs make big plays because their guys up front are blocking. That was a great uh, play right there of three guys. Yeah knocking two defenders down. Well, you know, it bothers me when we talk about skilled players. We're talking about the guys that handle the ball. There's a lot of skill in this there offensive sure lineman yeah. as well. Okay, our question mark this week is, what makes a true fan? Well, you know, okay. we, we do a lot of games. We, we travel a lot together, yep. and we joke around, and, and some of it turns into kind of serious conversation. This is kind of having fun, right. but it really is probably, for instance, I okay. think that if you're a true fan, 
the weather doesn't matter. If you're a true fan of a team, you don't look at the weather report and decide if it's going to rain and I'm not going to go. You go. Weather doesn't right. matter. A true fan. What do you think a true fan is? Uh, I think that's part of it. Here's what I'm going to throw out at you. You are supportive and not critical. Yeah. Now, I understand that we're going to say, you know what? My quarterback's not Tom Brady, but I'm going to support him. Yeah. Who's the most popular player on every football team? Backup quarterback? Yeah. Okay, he's a backup for a reason. Let's yeah. be supportive and not critical. That's a good one. I got another one. Buy a ticket. No free passes. Don't call your buddy. Don't call the coach and say, hey, can I get a sideline pass? Can I get a, a press pass? No, no, no. Buy a ticket. Go sit in the stands and be a fan. Now, you've got a true fan from Fort Recovery that you, you like well, to Well, yeah, to. a true fan is that those people from Fort Recovery who have the deck out there where they can watch all the games for free and still buy tickets to the game still and don't have to. Tickets. That's a fan. Yep, that's awesome. The other thing that I had is for a true fan, it is not the popular thing or part of your job we go to a lot of games. Right. That's our job. It's a passion for you. You're going to see a lot of passion in Cleveland tonight. You saw a lot of passion in Chicago. Those people hawking their homes to get tickets to go to those games. I'm not saying they're intelligent. I'm just saying they have a passion. <laughs> yeah. A lot of fun with a true fan. We do. Yeah. And, and, of course, we like fans. and They're some of my favorite people, but let's keep it in perspective. That's right. Your Bulldogs won. My Wildcats lost. We're still friends. We still like each other. We Sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. For our bright spot of this week, we want to look at those teams that made the playoffs and kind of run down our playoff teams in our particular area. And I think we've got a, some graphics here that show all of them. Let's start with Division One. This is Region Two. This is where we find Finley. Uh, Finley Trojans, they've got a really tough road to hoe. They're going to go play Dublin Jerome, who are the Celtics, not Celtics, <laughs> the Celtics, for those who pronounce it correctly, down in Dublin. Uh, that's a very, very good football team. They're 9-1. Their only loss was to Hilliard Bradley by three. Hilliard Bradley's also in the playoffs. Finley, of course, was on a three-game losing streak before beating Fremont Ross last week. Tough row for Finley. Hopefully they can get a win down there, but that'll be a difficult one against Dublin Jerome. And then going to Region uh, or Division Three, Region 12, if you look at this one, this is the one where we have the two uh, Western Buckeye League teams. St. Mary's plays D Dayton Belmont. Belmont has not played since October 14th. Their last two opponents either canceled or forfeited. They've been in the playoffs just one other time. That was a loss to Wapak a year ago. Wapak with a huge challenge. They ended up with Troutwood Madison. Madison's been in the playoffs multiple times, 11th time for them. They are very, very talented. They even have one first place vote in the poll this week. They ended up 10th, but we got one first place vote. They are ranked seventh or rated seventh in the uh, division because of how the polls came out, the, the uh, computer points came out. But that would be a very difficult challenge for Wapak, but playing at home, we'll see how the Wapak Redskins do. Let's go to Division 4, Region 14. They're going to play on Friday night. We've got number two seed, Ottawa Glendorf, playing Mark's Old School, Bellevue. Yep. And number three seed, Indian Lake, playing River Valley. Last year, the first round matchup was Indian Valley and Ottawa Glendorf. If both the local schools win, we get a rematch in the second round next year. Let's go to Division 5, Region 20. These teams will play on Saturday night. There's number two, Coldwater, 9-1, and one, going for their fifth state title in a row. You'll see teams in their region with better records. None have played better competition. None have any more experience playing in the state tournament than the Coldwater Cavaliers. As we move to uh, Division 6 and to Region 22, uh, these will be teams that are kind of on the northern edge of our viewing area. The number one rated team was Patrick Henry. They are third in the poll this week when we get to those people. They average 37.1 points per game. They have a win over Spencerville from our area, 34-7 to start the season. They've already beaten Liberty Center, who's in that bracket with them. And uh, that'll be a really tough challenge. At the bottom is Ayersville. They and Winford both undefeated, both looking very strong. They score points. So we're looking at probably the top four seeds all winning and then having great matchups in the second week. Let's go to Division 6, Region 24. Some more games on Friday night. Marion Local, the number one seed, playing West Liberty Salem. And then two locals uh, matching up against each other in what looks to be a great game, Spencerville. And St. Henry Jefferson, the number two seed on the bottom end of the bracket. Two MAC and two Northwest Conference teams and four of the top five seeds in this region are all Lima Land teams. And finally, moving into Division 7, let's start in Region 26. And this is kind of like the Macomb Invitational. Every team in this bracket has at least three losses. Well, they all have three losses. Calvert's six and three. Everybody else is seven and three. Macomb is going to be a very heavy favorite to get out of this area and get to the semifinals of the state tournament. 
Last bracket, Division 7, Region 28, Saturday night. Ada, number four, versus Fort Recovery, number five. Mark and I will be doing that game. Looking forward to that. Upper Scioto Valley, the number seven seed, first time ever for them. And Minster and Lehman Catholic in a rematch, number three and number six. A lot of local teams in that one, five of the eight. Okay, let's move on and let's preview a couple of the upcoming games that we're going to see in the playoffs. I think, Mark, you had the first one, St. Henry and Spencerville. All right, we just mentioned that. St. Henry's at 7-3, and three, Spencerville 8-2. and two. This is a great first-round matchup. It's going to be the St. Henry run-pass combo, because they can do it both, against the Spencerville ground game. They want to control the clock, keep Spencerville's offense, or keep St. Henry's offense on the sideline where they can't do damage. I'm looking forward to this one. That'd be a good one. And I have a Fort Recovery and Ada coming up. This is one of those four or five matchups that can go either way. We know Fort Recovery's success in a tournament. They did very, very well last year, won a championship a year ago. They come in, though, at 6-4 and four in the very tough MAC. Uh, Ada, 7-3. and three. We know how Conley likes to throw the football around. This will be one of those up-and-tempo type games and see who actually controls the pace of the game. And again, you and I get to do that one on television on Saturday. Let's look at Lehman Catholic at 7-3 and three in Minster, 6-4. and four. I said there's a rematch. It is. Minster won second week of the season, 44-21. to 21. A lot of things have changed since then, so don't bank on that score being a repeat. Minster's defense must stop a potent Lehman offense. Minster's given up some points. A lot of good MAC teams have done it, but they've got to tighten down the defense, especially in the playoffs. Let's go to one more. We're going to look at Macomb and Danbury Lakeside. Not for the reason that you typically think of. Macomb is a heavy favorite here. Why? Danbury Lakeside started the season with 19 players on their team. They supposedly had just 15 healthy bodies in their final game. Our producer director, Ben Reif, who does a little bit of research for us, they have twice as many people in the band <laughs> at Danbury as they do on the football field. But congratulations to them, one of the smallest schools and one of the smallest teams in the state as far as numbers, and they made the playoffs. That's just awesome. That is good really super. Them. Yeah, good for them. And now your reward is you get to play Macomb. <laughs> But you get to play yeah. week 11. Congratulations to you. Yep, okay, right. Mark, we want to finish up today with kind of some of our uh, highlights at the end of the season type team. Did you have this year a surprise team this year? I did. And I, I picked one, and it's USV. Okay. Because, you know, first league championship, first playoff, uh, you know, a lot of things going against them, and you've got more details on that. Yeah. But And then I picked as runners-up St. Henry. I thought they did a great job getting through that MAC And Lima Senior High. I yeah. thought Andre Griffin did a great job losing all of that talent that's off playing in colleges, and they still went 6-4 and four and almost beat the league champ on the last the, game of the season. The, the, there's one-point deficit there yeah. right there, Toledo Central Catholic, yeah. and what was a great game to end their season. And again, well, kind of pre pleased with what happened at Lima Senior. I would go with, uh, with St. Henry. They caught me by surprise. I, I didn't know that they were going to have that type of caliber coming back. And their game with Spencer this week, that, that's going to yeah. be a, a really big one. Okay, how about this one? Let's move on to this concept. We have uh, one through four. You know, one plays eight, then two plays seven, and so on. Yeah. Which five, six, seven, or eight-seeded team will go on and get out of their region? Well, it, it's a hard one. But I it picked is. Fort Recovery. Okay. And because they've had great success in yep. the tournament, won a state championship, they play in the max, so they're, they're tested week in and week out. They, they've got a healthy Caleb Martin, still missing the big guy inside. But, you know, if he catches his rhythm, they could be a tough out in this tournament. So I picked them uh, as, you know, they, they lost to some really good teams right. in the MAC. You know, 30 and 10 is their overall record. So I, I picked Fort Recovery. And, and we've seen what MAC teams do when they get in the tournament, mm -hmm. even though six and four. Yeah. I, I went with two that are kind of out of our area. I took the number five seed, Columbus Bishop Hartley. I think they're very talented and very good. It's a 5 4, so it's not like they're too far out of there. I think Troutwood Madison could do it as well. I hate yeah. to say that to our Wapak people because yeah. that, that would be a, a downer for our particular Lots area. Of skill. But Trout, Troutwood Madison could do it as well. Okay, how about one more uh, topic in here? Do we have a coach of the year? Someone you really thought did a great job? Well, because the surprise team of the year is USV, okay. I picked Josh Spencer right. with honorable mention going to Brad Luthman from St. Henry, Andre Griffin from Lima uh, Senior, and then the two best defenses. I don't know if they coach defense or not, but if you give up 44 points at, at Marion Local, Tim Goodwin deserves something. He does. I mean, that is unbelievable, less than a touchdown a game. Okay, and I'm going to take Josh Spencer. I, I, I agree with some of the things you said. They're, they're one in three. Then they go on a roll, they get healthy, they win six in a row. You, when your team's one and three, and you can hold them together, yeah. even though you're getting healthy and getting people back, I thought that was really a good thing for him. Obviously, it's their first league championship, their first time into the playoffs. I, I thought Josh Spencer just did a great job, and there are many, many deserving people in our area who did a great job with their teams as well. Final question, best concession stand food you had this year? Oh, man. 
Um, gee, I, I, I guess I got to go with Anna. Anna? It oh, was yeah. Free. With the rocket dog, it was free. <laughs> Hey, I was pointing at, I was pointing at oh, yeah. Ben and Garrett, that, that's our fearless right. leaders up in the, uh, up in the booth. Uh, they do all the work for us. They do all the graphics and the video. We just kind of sit up here and talk a little bit. They do everything we need for, to make this thing come out okay. We're going to be back next week with a playoff edition as we see who wins round one and gets into round two. We'll be back next week with a closer look.